Hello, folks. It's Saturday, August 10th. It's about 1230 or so on the West Coast of the United States. In this video, we'll be looking at the equity markets again, stock markets. Uh, we'll look at the weekly and monthly charts, which we didn't look at Thursday. And then I've got a few other charts um, that are related to the stock markets that I think you'll find interesting. Let me share my screen. We'll jump right in. So I saw a headline this morning that said, um, invest as though it is the 1970s. And of course, 1970s were characterized by stagflation, uh, stagnant economy and high inflation. And that's, <laughs> you know, uh, any number of things we could point out today that would suggest we are in a stagflationary uh, environment yet again. And so in this chart, we're looking at the Dow in the monthly time frame, 10 year period, January of 1970 to December of 1980, which I think that's actually 11 years, not 10. But anyway, during this time period, if you were invested in the index, so somehow, whether it was a mutual fund, of course, the ETF, ETFs weren't a thing back in the 70s. Uh, but if you were invested directly in the index somehow, you got a 19% gain over this period of time. That's not how people, not how most people invest. They have a portfolio of stocks. And when we talk about, you know, the index did this and the index did that, well, it's in interesting but it isn't really reflective of most investor portfolios because investors tend to have a portfolio full of stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, but they aren't directly invested in the indexes or in vehicles that directly track the indexes. And so anyway, uh, most investors didn't, stock investors did not get a 19% gain. There were a lot of companies that failed outright and so if you just happen to have one of those companies in your portfolio, well, you know, obviously <laughs> you didn't get the 19% increase. And so anyway, um, oh, and if you are playing with your stocks, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to chase momentum stocks or I'm going to, you know, rotate sectors and, you know, all the different strategies that stock investors uh, try to use to make money. Look at what could have happened during this time period? A 53% loss and a 28% loss. And so the only way you got a 19% gain is if you held tracks, you held something that tracked the index for this whole 10, 11 year period, and you didn't sell. And I'm, I'm emphasizing didn't sell because that meant you sat through a 53% loss. I, I'm pausing intentionally there. You sat through a 53% loss. That doesn't feel good, let me assure you. And then again, a 28% loss. So most, li most likely, there were a lot of investors who lost a lot of money uh, trying to play the stock markets during this stagflationary period. So enough said there. Um, so how do we invest as if it is the 1970s? Well, you know, defensive positioning in the stock markets, that's consumer staples and healthcare. Um, and then I would also point out that, uh, cigarettes and alcohol, uh, doesn't matter what the economy is doing. Smokers are going to find a way to buy cigarettes or tobacco and rolling papers. Um, and drinkers are going to find a way to buy alcohol. And so, you know, if, if, uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, defensive investing, consumer staples of uh, food, shampoo, beauty products, um, you know, people are going to continue using the, the day to day products um, that they use. And then, of course, healthcare, that uh, people are going to continue spending money on healthcare. And so, anyway, if you are holding, a portfolio of stocks, I'm just pointing out that we could be in a stagflationary period that might look a lot like this period did in the stock markets. So just, just saying. 
let me keep rolling. Uh, we looked at this chart Thursday. This is um, SP, SPX, S&P 500 in the daily time frame. A um, couple of things we didn't look at. One in particular, um, oh, I forgot to mention this Thursday. So when we're looking at whether it's Andrew's pitchfork or a channel like this, a price channel, in this, let's, let me talk specifically about this case. So in this price channel, obviously the upper, upper range of that channel was the target on this rise. And we can clearly see that price didn't make it to that target, and that is a sign of weakness. And so, you know, whether it's a channel or 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 a channel within an Andrews pitchfork, you know, as you think about it, think about a fork, it's it's got two channels basically. Um, and so, anyway, not reaching the next target is a sign of weakness, and and we can see what what ensued uh, after that sign of weakness appeared. Volume is the other thing we didn't talk about Thursday. And so notice, as price is declining, volume is rising. And that is exactly opposite of what you want to see if you are a stock bull. Rising volume as price is falling, that's bearish. And then also notice that in this, this rally, the rally that started, you know, basically Tuesday, volume was declining. And again, that's exactly opposite of what you want to see if you are a bull on stocks. In a bullish market, as price is rising, volume rises along with it. In a bearish market, when price is dropping, volume increases or rises as price drops. And so anyway, the, the volume action uh, in this time frame is, is bearish, another bearish indicator in that chart. This is the weekly time frame, SPX. We didn't look at this chart. Um, again, sign of weakness up here, downside targets, you know, round number at 5,000. Uh, 10 week moving, or excuse me, 40 week moving average as potential targets. And then, of course, the bottom of the double the range, um, which was, as I said, Thursday. That was an advanced technique that Dr. Timothy Morge taught in his uh, series of Andrews Pitchfork classes. And so, um, oh, and then very overbought. So in the weekly time frame, the, the market's uh, still very overbought. So um, this fairly significant decline so far has yet to bring uh, stocks back to uh, a reasonable level of um, overbought, oversold. Currently still very overbought. Uh, we can see a little bit of the uh, rising volume. It's it's not as easy to see in this time frame, but if we look, um, you know, there's 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 the rise and then the um, the fall. And actually, I drew that too long. You know, it's more. It's about where does it start there? So rising volume as prices declining, and then there's well, we've only got one bar, but then declining volume. <laughs> Um, on the rally from from Friday. Um, so enough enough there. Let's see. In the monthly time frame, this is a shift pitchfork. We can see, you know, price reached that target. And that that's what I was saying just a second, just a few seconds ago. An Andrews pitchfork, it's essentially two price channels. And so when when price pushes up into the upper channel of a fork, this fork, let's talk specifically about this fork, price pushes up into that upper channel in Andrew's pitchforks, the next median line becomes the target, the next target. And in this case, price reached that target. And so, you know, that's, that's a positive indication. Uh, notice that we got a, a topping, basically that's a topping candlestick with that longish uh, upper wick, and then followed by a, you know, a bearish, bearish candle. But too early, in my opinion, too early to uh, say too much 
about this chart, the monthly time frame, other than uh, price has reached a level where a pullback wouldn't be surprising. So uh, MACD, you know, quite overbought, but not as overbought as, as it was back in, that was November of 21, uh, clearly in bull mode on a buy signal and and lots of energy. So in the monthly time frame, uh, you know, SPX could continue to the upside, potentially. Uh, now we're on, okay, this is the Dow daily. We looked at this. Um, I don't, let's not spend any time there. In the weekly, you know, so again, you know, a target that the Dow failed to meet couple of toppy candles that that one in particular that green one with long upper wick that's a that's a very toppy candle um and then followed by you know that that green candle is somewhat bullish but then a, a big red candle so anyway toppy action in the weekly time frame in the dow Notice that price uh, nearly tapped the 40-week moving average, which, you know, reasonable to find support there. So not surprising that after a, a significant decline, price gets to the 40-week moving average and bounces. So, um, and again, I think it's just a bounce. I'm, I'm not expecting continued upside. Monthly time frame uh, doesn't look as bullish or look as good as the SPX does uh, from some, some respects. Um, what we could say about the Dow is it's got an upside target that it hasn't reached yet. And in this time frame, price hasn't failed. And so, you know, here in the monthly time frame, we could maintain that the Dow is still looking pretty bullish. Bull mode and MACD on a buy signal, lots of energy. We've got an upside target and price hasn't failed yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a funny thing about financial markets. You know, you, you pretty much make any case you want. You want to be a bear? Yeah, you can make that case. You want to be a bull? Yep, yeah, make that case too. So, um, which is important. And I've, I've said this numerous times. It's important to recognize your own biases. And, and I'll tell you, right, I'm, I don't like stocks. And, you know, I got mining stocks, but um, I decided, uh, she, well, it was in the aftermath of the dot-com bubble. Uh, the dot-com bubble bursting, more accurately, that was when my, you know, I got interested in the financial markets and I started looking at the financial markets and I decided for... For my own, I wasn't sharing this information at the time. It was just for my own personal investing um, uh, research. Stocks are for suckers. <laughs> it's like, you know, you're, you're playing a poker game and you don't know who the patsy is. It's you. And so anyway, you know, back in the 2002 time frame, I decided that stocks were for suckers and, and I pretty much stayed out of the stock market since then, other than mining stocks. Um, put my money elsewhere, let me put it that way. So let's continue with the charts. This is the Dow relative to gold. And, and the relative charts can be interesting sometimes. And so... Um, in the upper panel of this chart, we can see the Dow back to 2000. And of course, that's what I'm just talking about. The, the dot-com bubble uh, bursting doesn't, doesn't look dramatic in, in this chart because, you know, it's monthly time frame and we're showing so many years of data. Um, if we zoomed in on that time period, it was a significant uh, decline in the markets um, after the dot-com bubble uh, popped. If we just look at this market or this chart, that looks bullish as all get out. So we had the great financial crisis in 2008. You know, that's this, this bottom here. And then stock markets have just been off to the races ever since. So, you know, that looks real good. If you're a, a stock investor, you're looking at that, you're, you know, you're doing the victory lap. Woo, I'm winning. Well, okay, temper your enthusiasm. Let's look at what the stock markets have done relative to gold. And that's what we see in the lower panel. 
uh, it's not so exciting, <laughs> you know? So uh, there's the bottom back in 2008, flat. Yeah, we start to get a rise. That's, um, you know, that was the peak of gold in 2012 or so. Um, and, and anyway, the, the Dow in gold, if we price the Dow in gold, basically flat. And so, you know, it, it, in the 2008 to 2024 period, your stocks may have done that, but the real value, the purchasing power of your stock portfolio has done this, basically gone sideways um, I would say at best, but you know, that's my bias coming, sneaking in. But so, so anyway, um, the relative charts can be interesting. Um, and this one is showing us that the, the gains in the stock markets have not been as exciting as you might think, uh, relative to other markets like the precious metals, uh, gold in particular. Um, NASDAQ, tech stocks. We looked at this chart Thursday. Um, I don't have anything to add from what we talked about Thursday. NASDAQ in the weekly, clearly overbought based on MACD, yet still in bull mode. Currently on a sell signal, but um, in bull mode. Energy fairly low. Uh, big green bar for last week, which is interesting that... Um, given all the volatility and the downside uh, in the last week, uh, that we managed to pull a green bar out of, out of the NASDAQ. So um, it did not find support at 40 week, 40, excuse me, the 40 week moving average. And that's not bullish. I mean, uh, although that's a green bar, the fact that it, plunged below the 40 week moving average before it turned around and reversed. That, that's not a positive indication. I mean, we can see back here, uh, that was back in October. Price comes down, taps the 40 week moving average, and then it's back off, back to the races, you know? That's not what, <clears throat> that's not what we're seeing here. Let's keep rolling. NASDAQ in the monthly time frame. This is a modified shift pitchfork. Price tapped the upper median line and then pulled back. And so, you know, we could look at that as topping action. Um, but as I said about the previous monthly charts, there's not enough bearish activity there to say that price has failed. In this time frame, price hasn't failed. Um, certainly hasn't failed decisively yet. I mean, you know, we we could we could draw that that line as potential horizontal support level, something like that. Uh, I'm OCD. It's got to be horizontal. Darn it. I'm just too funny. It's not easy being OCD, folks. Um, so anyway, not enough uh, data yet in the monthly time frame to say definitively that price has failed in the stock markets. Uh, it is very overbought, you know, NASDAQ in the, this time frame, very overbought based on MACD, still on a buy signal um, and energy still elevated. So um, that's all I got in this update, folks. Um, really just wanted, wanted to take a, a, a look at the longer term charts of the stock markets. Um, and then I had those, those other two charts uh, to share with you. And this one, I've returned to this one because it really, I'd really encourage you, if you have a portfolio of stocks, um, just think about defensive positioning. I can't give you, I can't give you investing advice and I probably wouldn't even if I could, but uh, I, I will encourage you to give some thought to uh, taking a defensive stance with your stock portfolio. That's all I got. Let me uh, let me shut this video down and I'll see you soon.